Hi, I'm here with this week's happiness strategy. I'm going to follow the same format as the last couple of weeks and I'll be reading our weekly featured article aloud. Every week I write an article that I share on Empowered Living on my website as well as I share it out on Thrive Global. I share both the article and the video as well as some other resources and articles in my weekly note that I send out called M's Weekly Inspiration. And this note gets delivered every Thursday morning. So if you're not already signed up to receive those, I will include the link, the sign up link in the description of this video. So this week, our weekly featured article is called How to Move Out of Resistance and Feel Good Now. Do you hold yourself back from your hopes and dreams? Have you ever allowed fear and doubt to prevent your dreams from becoming a reality? How often do you allow your worries to pollute your daily experience of life? When we allow fear, worry, or doubt to take the lead, it's challenging to feel good while navigating life. When we hold ourselves back from feeling good in life, we move into a place of resistance. Our resistance often draws in more fear, worry, and doubt. If we continue focusing on what we don't want, the momentum builds and we become more resistant. Our resistance holds us back from feeling good and enjoying the experiences we truly want in life. It's a vicious cycle, but it's one we can break at any time. Breaking the cycle of resistance requires that we rise to the occasion of our lives. It requires that we care more about how we feel than anything else. We must use our feelings as a guide to get on the path of least resistance. When we are less resistant, we are more open to focus on what we do want. Directing our attention to what we do want helps us move with our lives instead of pushing against our lives. When we are in resistance, this all can sound like a huge leap of faith. In a way it is. The real question to ask yourself is, how do I want to feel right now? Chances are you don't want to feel worse. You want to feel better. Each of us is in charge of how we choose to feel in life. If you know you want to feel good, then it's simply a matter of practicing getting more comfortable feeling good. Here are the practices I'm using to move out of resistance and feel good in my daily life. Give them a try and see what opens up for you. Practice number one, fear is a gift. Changing the way we view fear is a gift we can give ourselves. Fear is an emotion that's hard to hide. The more we feel it, the greater it grows. Fear is an intense feeling that evokes a physical response. The fact that we can feel fear on a physical level is the hidden blessing. The intensity of the feeling can be used as a wake-up call to tune inward, regroup, and change the momentum of our thinking. Fear is our sign that we've separated from our inner truth and it's time to realign. The point isn't to feel the fear and do it anyway. The real work is to get in tune with our own inner truth and guidance system. When we are aligned, we trust in our steps forward despite not knowing what will happen next. When we move with the ebb and flow of our life, we move out of resistance and fear. Think of resistance as a giant rock at the head of a river. We might be scared of the current in the river, so we swim upstream toward the rock. When we finally reach the rock, we are exhausted and even more petrified because we push so hard against the force of the river. We cling to the rock because we're afraid to do anything else. Then we witness other people having fun in the river. They are enjoying the ride as they float downstream with the current. Life is like that too. We simply need to trust in ourselves, find our point of least resistance and start there. So an extra daily practice. Next time you feel fear, ask yourself, what do I truly want? 
How do I want to feel in this situation? What is one small step I can make now that will help me align with what I truly want? Practice number two, when in doubt, switch gears. When we are overcome with doubt, it can be challenging to know what we truly want. In this scenario, we can take a break from what feels heavy and hard by switching gears. In today's noisy world, we've turned distraction into a way of life. Usually, distracted living doesn't contribute to our well being. It can lead to procrastination, feeling disconnected, and being overwhelmed. But with intention, we can use distraction as a tool we actually benefit from. Despite our best efforts to focus on what we want, sometimes we can still feel stuck and resistant. In this case, it can be beneficial to simply divert our attention elsewhere. The idea is to make our distractions healthy, not harmful. When we switch gears, we stop the momentum of our resistant and doubt-filled thoughts. Take a break from doubt. Taking a break from doubt can create the opening for clarity and connection to our inner truth. It feels good to feel good. When in doubt, do something that feels good. So the extra daily practice here is instead of lamenting over doubt, shelf your doubt and divert your attention to a healthy pastime. Take a nap, read a book, get outside, listen to music, dance, play with your kid or pet, or do something creative. If you meet up with a friend, don't spend the whole time lamenting over your doubt. Just do something that's healthy and will help you change the overall vibe of your thinking and mindset. Practice number three, use feelings to guide presence and alignment. In order to live a life where we are present and aligned with our truth, we have to start waking up to how we feel. How we feel creates the tone of our life experience, not the other way around. When we make that connection, everything becomes easier to navigate. Our feelings are powerful. When we become aware of what we are feeling on a regular basis, it's easier to course correct and get on the path of least resistance. When we are in alignment with our inner truth, we feel good. But what about the rest of the time? When we feel judgmental, stuck in resistance, frustrated, angry, etc., we can also use these feelings as our guide. All of our feelings become a gift when we see them as a sign it's time to realign with our inner guide. When we are in alignment, our inner wisdom will lead us toward more ease and grace. This isn't to say we won't continue to feel sad, mad, or scared. We are human beings and so we get to experience the whole spectrum of feelings. When we are aligned and we, allow, and we allow presence to shine on our fears and problems, we begin seeing them in a different light. They may not go away, but their intensity fades. We are always evolving and our experience is constantly changing. When we use our feelings as a guide, we create more self-awareness. When we care about how we feel, we start seeing that we have a say in how our experience of life will play out. With presence and alignment, it becomes easier to see that the path of least resistance is always available to us. So the added daily practice here is to start your morning feeling good immediately. Bring your awareness to three things you are grateful for in the moment. Allow yourself to feel grateful. The more you lean in and feel gratitude, the more momentum will carry over in your day. When you feel yourself in resistance, use the above practices. Either focus on what you do want or switch gears and do something you know will feel good. When we practice becoming aware of our feelings in our body, we strengthen our presence. When we are present and not caught up in the hard story, it's easier to feel good. What about you? What is your access point on the path of least resistance? So that is our weekly happiness strategy and focus. 
It's all about trusting in ourselves and you know, being gentle with ourselves and just caring more about how we feel. You know, not getting so caught up in the story that life is hard, but using those stuck places that we can get into as very valuable information to tune inward and to connect and kind of get aligned with our inner truth because when we guide our lives from our inner wisdom and our inner guide, um, we are going to move towards a feeling that feels good. And so when we get more in tune with how we feel, it just becomes so much easier to move with it the ebb and flow of our life rather than pushing and resisting life and um, making life harder than it needs to be or getting stuck in our stuck places longer than we need to be there. So, you know, again, with all of the happy strat happiness strategies, it's just all about um, building that daily practice and seeing yourself as extremely resourceful and able and, um, in, you know, empower yourself to see that you are the driver in, in this journey on, on your life, in, in, in your life journey rather. So to, you know, do what you need to do to really um, just allow yourself to have more presence in your daily life and to feel good in your daily life. And when you don't, um, to not hyper focus on those feelings, but to use them as as kind of a wake up call that it's time to that you're not really quite aligned in that moment, and it's time to just see where you can course correct and get back on your path of least resistance. And least resistance doesn't always mean that um, we're going to be happy and having a dance party. It just means that we are. Um, moving with life and that the next steps to kind of guide us on our path you know and keep us on our highest path will be easier um, they'll come to us easier because we aren't you know we don't have our walls up and we're not blocking the way or we're not so kind of stuck in the story that everything is hard so I just invite you to try these practices on this week and you know just notice yourself more just even increasing our self-awareness goes such a long long way in um, empowering ourselves so whatever you get up to I hope that you have an amazing week and I look forward to connecting again soon thank you